I would have sang that this morning, um, but pray for me, my voice is a little rough, but I wanted to start with that song, I cast all my cares upon you, I lay all of my burdens down at your feet, and any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. Let's open with prayer. God, I just thank you for this day, I thank you for this opportunity to speak, and I pray, God, that uh, my voice wouldn't be heard, but that you would speak through me, God, that your message would be given to the people, God. It's not about my thoughts and, and what I think, God, but it's about you and what you think and what you want us to know. God, feed us. Feed our hungry souls. We are your flock, and we thank you, God, that you know how to feed us. And I pray, God, that you would increase our faith. I pray, God, that you would help us to trust you until we see your word fulfilled and that we would learn persistence in prayer. And God, we thank you and praise you for life, health, and strength. Help my voice to be clear and help us all to learn and grow today. In Jesus' name, amen. So pastor asked me to teach, um, and so it may be short, but hopefully sweet. We'll see. <laughs> um, but the lesson today uh, is the very final lesson in our book, um, From Cana to Capernaum. And as I prepared for this lesson, I read the daily devotional each day, um, and in our Sunday school book, I just wanted to encourage anyone who currently doesn't have the habit to read that daily devotional daily um, to do that this week. There were a lot of great thoughts in there, and I think it would really bless you. Um, so the lesson text is John chapter 4. If you could turn in your Bibles to it, we're going to come back to it again later. Um, Ke Brother Kevin will have it up here on the screen for now, but we're going to um, return to it. So if you could turn to John 4. We'll start in verse 43, and Brother Kevin will, or I'm sorry, Elder Floyd, <laughs> Elder Kevin, um, will read that for us at this time. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet had no honor in his own country. Then when he was come into, the, into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went into the feast. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and he himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Amen. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> We're going to start with a few maps. I wanted to uh, use a little visual. I think visuals are helpful. So we're going to start with looking at Israel, first the world, and then it will zoom in on Israel. Um, and we are thinking of Israel and praying for Israel right now as we know there's a war going on and we need to be praying for them. And they are still God's chosen people. And thankfully, we're the Gentiles that are blessed enough to be welcomed into the family, grafted in, as they say. Um, so as we're zooming in on Israel here, we'll pause once we get a little closer. And I want to point out some of the bodies of water here just to kind of give us a context for where our story is taking place today. Um, oops, if we can go back to just the very end of that and then pause on that. 
um, the very top dark spot there, right there, is the Sea of Galilee. And then the larger dark spot below is the Dead Sea. So now we're going to look at a map that's zooming in on Judea and Galilee. And we'll look at those bodies of water and the cities a little closer as well. All right, so we have Judea in the bottom green section, and then Samaria is the tan section in the middle, and Galilee is the top green section. And then you see the Dead Sea is the larger bottom section of water, and then a little higher right next to Galilee is the Sea of Galilee. And at the very top of Galilee, there's a tiny little lake called the Hula Lake, which later when we zoom in again, you don't want to be confused that about the water, so I just wanted to point out that there's three bodies of water. It's like kind of like large, medium, small, as you're looking at those. So, but we're going to talk about how Jesus had come out of Judea and entered into Samaria. He met a Samaritan woman by the well and revealed himself unto her. And she and many others believed on Jesus. After two days, he departed and went into Galilee. So he was passing through from Judea to Samaria, and then he entered into Galilee. Um, before we zoom in on Galilee, um, just remember that we've got those three bodies of water, the Dead Sea at the bottom, the Sea of Galilee, and then the Hula Lake. So go ahead and we'll zoom in on just that green portion. So it's a different map here. But so the Dead Sea would be down here below the map, the larger sea. And then we've got the Sea of Galilee there. And then that tiny little blue um, at the top where the little rivers are coming out is the Hula Lake. So um, we've... Our story today takes place right at the top corner of the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum. I circled in red there. And the man journeyed from Capernaum to Cana, where Jesus was, which is circled there next to Nazareth. So this journey was approximately 15 miles. Um, the man went from Capernaum to where Jesus was in Cana. And this was no short distance back in those days to travel on foot or possibly a beast of burden. Um, his son was sick, though, and he had a need, and no one else could help him. So he was willing to make that long journey. So um, that's the end of our maps. Thank you very much. Just wanted to give context and help us to kind of see where is Cana in the world, where is uh, Capernaum and Galilee, and these places that we hear about as we read our Bible. It's nice to look at that. And a lot of times Bibles will have maps in them for you to reference as well. So we're going to go back to our scripture of John 4, and I'd like you all to read verse 50 out loud together with me if you're able. John chapter 4, verse 50, and it says, Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. So that was the key. The man believed the word that Jesus had spoken. So we must believe that Jesus' words have power. Both his written word, which is the Bible, but also how he speaks to us in prayer, or if he lays something so heavy on your heart and you know the God, that God is speaking to you about something. Um, but we, we are his sheep, and we know his voice, um, and... We want to learn his voice if we don't know it well right now. And in order to do that, it takes the Holy Ghost, it takes a lot of practice, listening, diligent seeking, because his sheep will know his voice. Um, and at the beginning of John 4, we have a Samaritan woman. Now, she was at the bottom of the societal uh, group of people there. She had a sinful past. She was probably considered an outcast. Um, so she was one person, at the, it was at the beginning of John 4, but then we have another person um, who was considered a royal official, the nobleman from Capernaum, and he most likely had status and prestige. So you have these two people from completely opposite ends of the spectrum in society, yet they both had one thing in common, which was they responded to Jesus in faith, and God blessed them both. To quote the Sunday school book, the Samaritan woman became a witness to her entire community while the, nobleman dying, the nobleman's dying son was healed. These two accounts remind us that Jesus loves everyone. Faith, not social standing, is the key to receiving a miracle. So if you have worries or stress or you're going through a challenging season, and some may call it a valley, 
Um, it can be a time for your faith and trust to grow. I remember Elder Harn would talk about when you look at the valley, it's so lush, it's so green. That's where all the grass grows. That's where all the trees and the bush grows. And the mountaintops, I'm sure it's a beautiful view, but it's kind of bare up there. You know, there's not a lot of green and growth going on at the mountaintop, but the growth happens in the valley. So growth can also involve growing pains. You know, I don't know if you all had growing pains as a kid. I sure did. I'm tall. And I just remember those pains in my legs as I would grow taller, and my kids have them too. Um, and you just say, oh man, these growing pains, it's uncomfortable. But it's for a purpose, it's to help you grow. And we have to experience that. So growth brings change, although it may be uncomfortable, but we can be thankful that we don't have to stay the same. I look back at who I used to be, and I'm grateful that I'm not that way anymore. I'm thankful that I've changed. I'm thankful I'm still changing. So I'm looking forward. Um, and, and just thankful to be different now. You know, we don't want to stay the same. But so we're going to turn to Hebrews 11. This is commonly referred to as the faith chapter. Hebrews 11, we'll start with 1 through 3, and then I'll just touch on 4 and 5, and then we'll go into verse 6. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in verse 4 it says, <clears throat> By faith Abel offered. And then verse 5, By faith Enoch was translated. And then verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So how can we please God? What must we do? And what must we have? Faith. Yes, we have to have faith if we want to please God. So as we prayed at the beginning, we want God to increase our faith. We need more and more faith. I want to turn to <clears throat> day three of our devotional. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, on page 109, if you have that, you, you can follow along. Otherwise, I'll read it for us. It says, faith is essential to any Christian's walk with God, but its very nature, by its very nature, the basis of faith is believing. Faith is not believing when all the answers are laid out. Rather, just the opposite. Jesus does not owe us signs or feelings to make us trust. We are called to trust, plain and simple. God shows us his power every single day. The air in our lungs, the world spinning exactly as it should, the sun marching east to west across the sky, all wondrously show, him his, handy, show his handiwork. These signs raise the concern that some people may serve God only if they can see or feel the extraordinary. In reality, the miraculous is his ordinary. So he does miracles every day if we look around and are able and willing to see that. I want you to remember two things from the lesson today. Number one, that we would ask God to help us increase our faith. And number two, that we would persevere in prayer. So if someone we love is going through something hard, we're able to, and we're able to help them, we do. You know, we want to do whatever we can. Love motivates us to do all that we can to help those closest to us. As children of God, we can find comfort in the arms of our Heavenly Father in our time of need. Just like the song that I had played, we can, the First Peter 5 verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. What a comfort that God cares for us and that we can take our, com our cares to him. I often think of the song, too, um, oh, what needless pain we bear if we would just take it to the Lord in prayer. That's all we have to do. You know, often we just try to deal with it, and all we have to do is just lay it down. I cast my cares um, to the Lord and at his feet and lay my burdens down. So when man doesn't have the answers, we know that God does. We can't give up easily. Again, to quote the Sunday school book, Jesus made it clear that persistence is a key factor in effective prayer. 
In Luke 18, he told the parable of the unjust judge, the story of a woman who received her answer just because she would not stop asking. So Luke 18, 1 summarizes the meaning of the parable as men ought always to pray and not to faint, which means don't give up. Just because we haven't gotten an answer to our prayer yet doesn't mean that we should stop asking. In Ephesians 6, 18, Paul encourages us to persevere in prayer. What does it mean to persevere? Anyone want to? Yep, 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 absolutely. Yes, to persevere uh, means to keep on trying even when it's hard and you want to give up. We have to keep pressing, right? Um, true faith perseveres in prayer regardless of how it looks or what may not seem to go the way that we wanted it to go. And if the Lord does answer you and you know that he has, Will we trust Jesus enough to take him at his word? First Peter, let's turn to First Peter chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 5 through 9. But just to lead into it, because it starts with who are kept, I just wanted to go a little bit higher where it says that, that Peter's talking about God who in his abundant mercy hath begotten us again a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. But here's the highlight part. So you who are kept by the power of God, how? Through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Do you ever experience heaviness? I do. <laughs> yep. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. I mean, if you're tried in the fire, you're going to feel something. And it's not necessarily going to feel comfortable, but it's for your good. Our faith is tried in that fire. It might be found that it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And now here's a verse I want to highlight, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So when does our faith end? When we see Jesus. So we have to keep that faith until the end so that we will obtain that salvation of our souls. Because, yes, he, we're saved, but he's saving us every day, all the time. It's a process. Until we see him face to face and it's all said and done, that's when we've received the end of our salvation. And that's when the end of our faith will come. Um, all right, so we have to press until the end and it will be worth it. Our faith and our prayers make a difference. I want to also, there was a great, there was just so many good parts. I mean, since I've been teaching the kids, I haven't been keeping up with you all with this book, but I just thought the devotionals were really, had some really great things. So I wanted to read another section on page 110 and day four of our daily devotional here. It says, you do not have to chase God down to get his attention. He is close. Your style of devotion does not have to look like those around you. Your prayers matter, no matter where you are on your journey with the Lord. Wherever you are, ask him to speak into your situation, and he will. So, again, he loves you. Your prayers matter. And remember, we're going to ask God to help us increase our faith and persevere in prayer. Keep on praying. Push. Right, and there's a, there's a little phrase, push, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. I like to remember that as well. Um, but so there's, I know this is quick, but I just have one little story to close. Um, the last story I want to share is um, Gigi, otherwise known as Millie Floyd. Our, we called her Gigi for great-grandma. She used to say that Bishop Paddock would talk about a grain of mustard seed and that it wasn't just about the fact that it was so tiny, that a little bit of faith was so powerful, but also that it was pure. It was a mustard seed through and through. Your faith has to be pure through and through. And so um, we don't want a single bit of doubt in there. But 
If it tries to creep in, we can be like the man who brought his son possessed with an evil spirit to Jesus in Mark 9. In verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And I pray that prayer. If there's any doubt in me, I say, God, help my unbelief. You know, because we all believe in here. We wouldn't be here if we didn't. But there's times where doubt will try to creep in. And we just have to cry out and say, God, I do believe. But what, if there's any doubt in me, help me. Help my unbelief. And he will. So thank God for faith. And God, we want you to increase our faith. And please help us to persevere in prayer. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Lord. Amen. Hope you enjoyed that Sunday school lesson. It's a good lesson. Amen. We begin the very beginnings there of the ministry of Jesus. Amen. And it's establishing in our hearts that He is the Christ. Amen. We must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. All right. We thank God for the lesson today. This time, let us stand. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we're th certainly thankful for today. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing in it. Lord, we just pray that you will move upon us, Lord, in uh, this service today. Thankful for our Sunday school session and those that are able to be out and we continue to pray for those who are sick and afflicted in the midst. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us and keep us in your hand, watching over us, O oh God, as we wait for the coming of the Lord. Bless, Lord, in a mighty way and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.